let's begin now. Alright, what's up boys and girls? We are Black and Yellow Movies, where we review independent and foreign films. This one's called Tangerine. Tangerine, and I loved it. This was my choice. Merry Christmas Eve, bitch. And it deals with a prostitute who gets released from jail after 28 days. She's going through Los Angeles to find her pimp, who she's in love with. Okay. Pretty straightforward, right? And it actually is a pretty straightforward movie, but it's fantastic. So you get Cindy and her friend Alexandra. They're, they're going all around LA. They're trying to find this pimp by the name of Chester. And Alexandra is kind of like, you know, just calm down. Why do you like him anyway? He's not the classic girlfriend. Don't even go for him. Mm. I told you, it's just a rumor. You don't know just yet if it's true. And I did a little research and I found out that it was filmed on three iPhone 5s. Three iPhone 5s. That is amazing because the way it is filmed, you are put in this position of witnessing these people's intimate lives, but you're still an observer. A lot of times it doesn't seem like it's put on a tripod. It's put on like one of those like iPhone docks kind of that yeah. kind of hold it steady, but they don't yeah. have like a, yeah, like you said, a whole production or tripods. Yeah. I actually saw a picture and it's literally him with an iPhone here and then the little stand and that's how they're filming. It brings a raw gritty realism to the, yeah. to the look and feel the film. The way not only it was filmed, but these characters, they really bring them to life. Yeah. And then their, their lives style that they live there it's so raw and gritty and it's so unique i'm not realizing anything that's different from my lifestyle i'm just interested in theirs girl do you really want to go back to prison you just got out mama i told her that too don't act like prison is a bad place to go I, I read that the director sean baker actually said that he named the film and put a certain kind of uh filter on the iphone camera because it reminded him of the LA sunset. Mm -hmm. And you really get that feeling. Like, I mean, a lot of it is kind of shot at dusk. It's a beautiful flourish because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love directors and movies that really play with the color palette. Another thing we really liked is that these characters were both transsexuals. They could have totally made this movie about them being transsexual and really pushed the issue the whole time, but they didn't. They were also African-American. They were African-American. And they didn't push that issue either. They didn't push that either. When the movie starts, Cindy and Alexandra are talking and you're kind of like, oh, they look, oh, are they transsexual? And you started to think about it a little bit. But once Alexandra tells Cindy that her boyfriend cheated on her, they're off, right? They're off. And Cindy's off and she's trying to find her boyfriend. And through the whole movie, you don't even really realize or really even think that she's transsexual. transsexual. Because they didn't try to push that agenda so much you kind of like, not like to say accepted, but you kind of just forget about it. And I think that's powerful in itself. You're like, this is, these are just people going yeah. about the same issues that we do, you know, that everybody does. Another thing is that they're also prostitutes. Mm -hmm. They don't push that issue either. They don't push it at There's all. There's really no agenda to this movie. You don't even really think about it while you're watching the movie, which I think is exactly what he was trying to do. Right. Not push an agenda, show you all these things that you might think are, I don't know, um, out of pocket, immoral, whatever you, crazy. whatever your stance is. It, it seems like just a normal, almost like love story. She's sincere about finding her pimp mm -hmm. and like how outrageous that might sound to anybody listening, but it's not outrageous when you watch it. It's funny at times. It's heartbreaking at times. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes, yeah, it does get a little disgusting even, but it's like, that's life. And you just got to tell the story how it is, enjoy the characters. And that's exactly what the movie did. Characters were amazing in this movie and one of the great things that we talked about this a little bit ago was that you sympathize with every single character There wasn't any one of them who you hated and felt like their motive was misdirected. Cindy, she was cheated on. Yep. And then you have Alexandra who she's that classic best friend yeah. in the movie. And the thing that we like about both of them is that they're themselves. They're, they're themselves, like, yeah. Unapologetically themselves. They don't have any masks. Like every day when we go to work or we go somewhere, we're meeting new people. You always got to put on like a kind of act. You yeah. Know, you got to be polite. You got to be, you know, the, the perfect first impression. You need to learn how to blend. Your chestnuts are roasted on the bottom of your chinny chan chan. What exactly are you doing to my face? I don't know, make you look better than what you looked like before. Because it's just refreshing that you see these two people who just like want to be themselves and they don't care what other people think. They don't care and that's the beauty of it. And it's and endearing. It, and it's great because they're in a position in, in, a, in a kind of neighborhood where they can do that and nobody judges them for it. Also the friendship between Cindy and Alexandra is great. It's, they're, they're actually best friends in real life, right? I don't know if they're best friends, but I know for a fact they were friends before they started the production of the film. Alexandra actually was taking hormones at that time as well. So like, not only are these characters in the movie portraying something so real, these people are living these lives. It's very apparent on camera too. It just seems everything's so raw. They're really truly living and just walking around LA. Right. And it's pretty obvious. It's 
it's pretty obvious. That like, they're just walking and living, and it's it just feels so genuine. They're getting these intimate conversations in places where you never would, like you said, in the back of the car, where you literally are right there. When you're on a bus in service, yeah. and you're like, okay, this would have to be so like organized in like a big production but since this is such a small one mm -hmm. it's not weird for people to see each other filming on an iphone nowadays all right so for the dislikes i mean i didn't really have there were things that i disliked <laughs> there wasn't anything that i can really say i didn't like about the movie i mean the only thing we can really say is if the viewer is sensitive to yeah. certain subjects you probably might not want to watch it there's a lot of cussing in it a lot of a lot of vulgarity prostitution, prostitution is a sex sex with that you know yes um, nudity nudity like we said if you're sensitive to that then this is not probably a movie that you'll like right but even if you don't like that stuff and you're just a fan of good film then give it a try yeah. because i know some people who have watched films and they might not like horror movies mm -hmm. or they might not like you know suspense movies and they watch get out and they're like this is amazing because it dealt with a bigger subject like this does but doesn't push its agenda but tangerine sean baker sean baker right. director can't wait for what he does next this is black and yellow movies with your independent and foreign movie reviews and we're signing off comment below tell us if you really like the movie if you've seen it um what's your favorite part and subscribe subscribe and that's it that's it see you guys we're gonna talk about this Japanese anime movie called Your Name. Um, it talks about this high school boy and this high school girl. They actually end up waking up in each other's bodies. And at first, you know, they kind of chalk it up to this is a very profound dream. There's something going on, it's weird. But one of the first scenes is interesting because you see the girl, she wakes up and she's, you know, you see the girl, she wakes up. But one of the first scenes. That's it. See you guys. See the girl.